Good evening and welcome. We've gathered here tonight around our phones as people of all lands have gathered for the last few years to share the news and to share a story, an amazing story, as old as time itself, but still being written. And though all of us have our own memories to recapture, wondrous things happen when we come together as a group. I hope you enjoy our story tonight on the Nocturnal Disney Podcast. And now, our feature presentation. This week, guys, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot to talk about. And we don't want to give you, like, a half-baked show. We don't want to give you a show that's, like, 15, 20 minutes because that's no fun. All right? You want to listen to something. You want to get into it at least a little bit. Well, me and Chris and Jamie are constantly having a conversation about World Showcase. We all really like World Showcase, but we all agree that it is not perfect, yes? Yes, I agree with that. Very good. And because of that, what we've decided to do tonight is think about the three countries that we would love to see added to the World Showcase. Not only that, but the one country we would like to see taken out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, now Jamie, I'm really happy you're on this episode because I, I know you didn't have a whole heck of a lot to add to like the entertainment news that was out out this week. Mm -hmm. I know you'll have a lot to add to this because of just how much you love to travel. Right. So, being the guest and the one who loves travel, why don't you go ahead and start us off? What's one of the countries you would like to add to Epcot? One of them I'd like to add would be Hawaii, because I know people would fight me whether that's a country or not. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, a lot of people view that as a state because right. technically it is. It is a state. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I feel like it's so different from mainland America that yeah. you could basically call it its own country. Mm -hmm. I mean, during the Food and Wine Festival, they have a whole Hawaii booth, so why not? Exactly. You know? Standalone. Yep. So tell me a little bit about your Hawaii pavilion. Like, what would you want to put in it? Well, I was thinking about Hawaii also because of um, the movie Lilo and Stitch. Yes. So that's kind of what came to mind when I first thought about this place. Um, so they couldn't make sure that's uh, a main part of this land. You know, they can do the theming of that. They can have the meet and greets with Lilo and Stitch in that area. Um, they can do some of the dancing hula competitions, maybe. The kids would love that, I think. That would be really cool, actually. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I feel like with your idea, you can even hit two of them. You can hit Moana, too. Like, I mean, you can get, mm -hmm. like, two movies up in there, you know? Sure. Exactly. Exactly. And especially now that Disney is kind of going away from that whole thing of, we cannot have IP in this park. Yeah. I mean, we got Guardians of the Galaxy coming in there now. We do have Baymax from Big Hero 6. We have Joy and Sadness from Inside Out, Wreck-It Ralph and Vanellope. All right. Norway is essentially frozen land, yeah. right? Yeah. And so now they're starting to like sprinkle in more characters into World Showcase. Like you go to France, you'll meet Aurora. You'll, you can meet Belle and Beast. I want to say Annette, but I don't think that's right. The the female Aristocat. Marie. It's Marie. <laughs> All right. It's up here. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. Good job. Thanks, guys. Like what about their food? Like would they have... A, a lot of food selections there, do you think, or not Not a whole heck of a lot? Just spam. Just <laughs> spam. <laughs> <laughs> thinking kebab, some thinking uh, maybe a, a pig roast. I don't know. Things that would uh, signify a, a Hawaiian hula. <laughs> exactly. That that could be cool. <laughs> that would be really fun. You know how the, uh, the spots now have like this one main draw, right? Like Mexico, you have the giant temple. Right. Right? Yeah. In Italy, you have the courtyard. Mm-hmm. Like, what would be the main draw of this area, do you think? Volcano. Put a volcano in there? And have it erupt every five minutes. Every five minutes? <laughs> Jiminy crickets. Wow. It, needs, it needs attention. <laughs> well, we'll get it. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't do that because it's already... I was going to say, make it a... a Something you could like slide down so it's a water volcano, but never mind. Yeah. We're verging into another another park at that point, so Volcano Bay. Yeah. Stinking copyrights. <laughs> 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 All right. So Chris, man, what about you? Which one what country would you love to see here? 
Um, my first one that I want to see is Peru. And I'm putting Peru in because there's not that many Latin American countries in here, this World Showcase, you know. There's just Central America with Mexico, but I feel you can do something really cool with Peru and tie it into the Emperor's New Groove, which is something that we all love. Heck yeah. I would love to see that movie get some love in the parks. Yeah, and the cool thing is, is like you get, in my vision, it's kind of like a neat little... uh, ride akin to like frozen ever after but with Cusco and him opening the new park and you're trying out a new ride his new water slide opening up Cusco topia (laughs) right and you the cool thing is is like it's kind of you know in peru it's based on the incan people and the and the people of peru you have the andes mountains and and uh machu picchu so you can do like some really cool architecture with the massive stones that they have there and the cool artwork that they're really known for and trying different foods, you know? Like, we all know Mexican food. And a lot of people, even if they're like, you don't know Mexican food, you need to try Mexican food. Right. Most people are still familiar with what even Mexican food is. Peruvian is a little different. It's a little out of people's comfort style. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. And b- besides, it's a, it's a really colorful culture. You see down there lots of bright colors and stuff like that. And like I said, you're tying in the Emperor's New Groove it's a little out of place too, you know, which is what I like, you know, because it, it is a South American country, it's something a little different. So that's what I'm thinking. Oh, no, dude, that is a great pick. Peru was actually one that I looked into myself to add. Didn't end up going that route, but I really like that idea. And I, like I said, I love the thought of Emperor's New Groove coming into the parks in any aspect because yeah. I love that mm-hmm. movie. But the thing that I would really be intrigued about would be your food, man. The food is just so different. Yeah. And it's like nothing else that is in that park. No. Right. And that's one thing I've always really liked about World Showcase is that, hey, yeah, I'm sure it is a watered-down version of these countries, but they are bringing some culture to it. Yeah. They're being fairly loyal to the countries themselves. Yeah. And you're bringing all these different flavors from around the world, literally, that people would have never tasted right. had it not been for Epcot. Yeah. I think that's really cool. And I think that plays perfectly into what they would have done for Peru. I agree with that. My first one is actually very similar to yours, Jamie. We were on a kind of similar wavelength there. I didn't go with Hawaii. I went with the Cayman Islands. Hmm. And to your point, Chris, I I was actually thinking about, you know, you could tie Moana into that somehow. Mm -hmm. Because the Cayman Islands, or even just like the Caribbean in general, because you have a number of different spots that you could go to in the Caribbean. You could have meetups with Captain Jack, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But some of the food, man, like the food was really where my head was at with this pick in particular. Because they have a whole booth dedicated to the Caribbean at the Food and Wine Festival. Very similar to the way they do Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And man, it, it it's really difficult for me to be like, okay, let's move on from the Caribbean. Like if I could, I would mm-hmm. stay in the Caribbean for the majority of the Food and Wine Festival. Yeah. Especially when you consider the fact that it's on that lawn just south of the Butterfly Garden. So it's really close to the chocolate nitro. I was going to say, are you going where I think you're going? I don't even have to move very far. (laughs) (laughs) It's very convenient, Bryce. It is. (laughs) Now, like, one drawback I feel like you would have with the Caribbean is your knee-jerk reaction to make it very beachy, make it very open. But I don't think you have to do that. Make it more of the, the jungle situation right make it more of a very lush pavilion a lot of trees a lot of greenery mm. and I, I, don't, think, I don't know if i can kind of cut in but like it would be really cool to see like a tortuga like yeah. set up you know kind of go with like a the pi- fully go pirate themed well it's funny because that was my like my centerpiece because you know like these these lands are designed around kind of like one thing right right and i would love for it to be a like a fort like Tortuga or something like a battle for, I think that would be really cool because when people hear Caribbean, they think of rum, 
and they think of pirates, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Right, right, right. <laughs> well, That'd be fun. Yeah, not a bad pick, buddy. Thank you, thank you, Jamie. What's your uh, what's your second country there? My second one would be Greece. That is a very, very interesting pick. Why would you Why would you want to go with Greece? Greece would be you tie in Hercules on that one, mm-hmm. and uh, you know you could do Mount Olympus as your your icon. You can do uh, traditional Greek food. That cult, the culture of it, I'm sure would uh, attract a lot of different people. People, you know, who have maybe visited Greece. Like I personally want to visit Greece. I've never been there myself, but I would as well. Yeah. So that would be just one of those like that you would be like, oh, that would be so cool to experience uh, a Greece uh, part of the World Showcase and eat Greek food. Yeah, I would. I would really love to be able to walk through World Showcase and then just kind of like stumble upon a ruins of Zeus's temple or something like that. I think that would be so cool. Maybe do like a tour of it or something. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. That could be fun. Yeah. Like as as far as like Greek food, like what were you thinking? Because I know like for me personally, Mm -hmm. man, just going back to the Food and Wine Festival, just because I love it. Greece is never a pavilion that I'm like, guys, <laughs> hold the phone. <laughs> We're stopping at Greece. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have the nerve to offer you nachos that are literally in parentheses. That's upsetting. I don't know what they're giving you. It's not nachos. <laughs> yeah. Their yeah, their cuisine is actually really good. Right. You know, lots and I've always loved their flavors because they incorporate a lot of lemon into a lot of yes. their foods. Sure. And I've, all about that they're while while they're it's not lacking in flavor they don't do it a lot a ton of flavor they kind of let what whatever it is that they're making really sing for itself besides it'd be nice to go to a pavilion that has lamb you know it's just something that's oh, a little yeah. different mm-hmm. you can really make that your main staple there i was gonna say that that would be the staple and thinking. they're famous for their potatoes and yep. and uh just a ton of other stuff you know um mm-hmm. And like go, jumping on what she was saying, the architecture would be really sweet to see. So the architecture in Greece is just so unique because going back to when you and I were talking about Haleo, where there's not a whole heck of a lot of just right angles. It is a lot of, you know, arcs and like sweeping lines and mm-hmm. it's really cool. And yeah. You have like the rounded roofs. Man, you have that one famous, like it's a real famous village, a real famous image just of like a white, of a bunch of white buildings with blue roofs. Mm. Like that would be really interesting to see. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it would be amazing. I mean, to be fair, in the Florida sun, the white buildings might be just a little bit blinding, but (laughs) it's still really cool. Mm -hmm. I think right there, Disney magic make it look as they do, envelop you in the in the world that's a cool thing about the world showcase you go to these places and you just like walk into that little nook and you're like wow i'm i'm in paris or i'm in germany yeah. or whatever it's just they do a good job at that that is cool that is like remember last week i was saying oh. disney doesn't really do very well with their theming of the rides and stuff and like i said they've they have turned that around but the theming that they put into the world showcase is incredible like, they have artists come in from Morocco, like, right. to make authentic mosaics. Like, that's, that is some incredible attention to detail. Yeah, great dedication. They brought in African thatchers <clears throat> to thatch the roofs in the Africa Pavilion. I think that's just incredible. I love the idea of being able to do, a, like, a real quick scan of the World Showcase yeah. and being able to see, oh, there's the Mexico Tower. There's the Italian Clock Tower. And there is Mount Olympus. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Chris, what about you, man? Where's there... Cusco? Exactly. <laughs> 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 or I should say Machu Picchu. Do not want to defend any Peruvians out there? Um, <laughs> this one was really tough uh, because there are so many good lands. But I'm deciding to go with India. India is a very unique culture. Very different. You know, it's like you got that blend of Middle Eastern. You got a blend of uh, 
of Asian, you know what I'm saying? There's so many complex flavors, you know? Their curries are insane, you know? Uh, oh, yes. And the cool thing is, is that they're a very vegetarian culture. At not someone who is a vegetarian, but it'd be nice to have an option in there where it's like, hey, I can try something that doesn't have meat in it. You know, just right. for those who are big into that. Plus, the country is beautiful. Dense jungles, the arch- like if you go to like the older architecture to the temples and see how they made them, man, they're just absolutely gorgeous. So, mm-hmm. and and the cool thing is, is like I feel like you can kind of throw like a little jungle book theme going oh, through absolutely. there. It that would fit sure. really nicely. Uh get a meet and greet with like Mowgli and you know, cool, you know, bring in shoot. I mean, have like a live animal in there. I mean, that'd be like legit. Um, <laughs> I don't want to cool. cage one, but I mean, I'm just saying you get the point. Like it, it would be really cool. Lots of flavor, mm-hmm. you know, and that's just what I want to go for. You know, I, I want something a little different. I want to, if I'm going to feel adventurous, you're going to be like India, you know, you're right. Very different. You know, I like it. Good idea. Their food I know you were touching on it, it is just so, so good. So good. But again, like we've been saying, it's not something that you're going to be like, I have to go get Indian food right now. Yeah. But if you're walking around Epcot, you're like, check this out. Yeah, let's go jump on this. Let's check this out. Let's see what this is. Well, the thing is that their their smells is what draws you in. Like you, you see a, an Indian restaurant, you walk past, it's like, that's Indian food because, right. you know, you can mm-hmm. smell the curries, you know, and, and that's what I would like to to see, you know, like if you're someone, you're hungry and you're walking around, smell should draw you in. And I feel like that's going to be a land that's literally going to be like, this is an adventure over here. You know, you got like a jungle look up front, temples in the back, you know, just you can do some really, really interesting stuff, I feel, with India. Yeah. Is that even a one of the options they have for the food and wine festival? I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think so. No. I don't so think it it, it would really be out either. there as far as just you know testing people's tastes, you know, yeah. and just opening yourself up. Again, this isn't gonna be like traditional Indian. I mean, it might, but I mean, you know, it's not gonna be like a traditional Indian restaurant. But like, it would be sweet to get those flavors. That way, people can kind of get out of their culture a little bit, try something other than chicken fingers, you know, exactly, or a taco. Exactly. Now, you were talking about how. The Indians have just unbelievable curries. Mm -hmm. My first experience with curry was not Indian food. Mine was Thai food. And that's actually my next land that I wanted to put in there was Thailand. Good pick. Again, I think Thailand is just one of those places that is so interesting. And a lot of people say, oh, Thailand would be cool to go to, but they would never go to Thailand. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so if you had kind of like Thailand light in Epcot, well, that's really cool. I want to go check that out. Yeah. Because like Thailand just has so much to offer in terms of like temples and just just the architecture. The architecture is so so interesting. Yeah, and and not to say that they're the same, but India and Thailand are are, are you can tell that they shared in, in influences as far as their architecture goes. You know, it wasn't like they were extremely different. I don't want to piss anybody off from any of either of these cultures, but you can see that they, you know, like Greece and Rome, there was very similar things. Oh, yeah. So with India and Thailand, I mean, I could feel like you're, it, I completely agree with you. Like if you gave me a toss up of either of these two, I'd be happy to take either one of them, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I was doing a little bit of research on this before I came in here and Thailand, the country, is famous for the Sunday walking market. And I think it would be a lot of fun to have part of this pavilion be that walking market because it would be like nothing else that we have in any of these countries. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have open air. Oh, hey, uh, I want to buy an apple or something like that. And they do that like a little bit similar over in like Africa in Animal Kingdom. So it's not unheard of for Disney to do something like that. And it's not like Disney doesn't have the produce to do something like that. Again, I just think it's something different. And if they wanted to go real different, another thing that Thailand is real famous for is their floating market. Mm -hmm. If you could somehow incorporate that into like, hey, we're going to step across, you know, very 
very close boats. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that could be really cool. Yeah, and then you walk yeah. it back into the giant temple where you have that f- that giant famous statue. And I had the note in my stupid phone crashed and I don't have it anymore. But so it's the, that giant golden statue. The one Buddha? that's laying down? Yes. Yeah, no, it's not Buddha. The, it's not the Buddha. There's one that's laying down. That's the Buddha. Buddha is not just sitting. There's one of him just laying down too. Huh. Well, I think he's really, really long. Yeah, that's the one I was saying. Yeah. That's Buddha? My brother went there. <laughs> Buddha. I concede. I. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I know you're used to seeing him cross-legged, but I mean they have right. other, uh, they have ones of him standing. They'll oh, have the one. the positions of Buddha. Yeah. Well, I knew that they had him in different positions, but this one, <clears> I, <throat> this one statue in particular, I didn't realize was a Buddha. Right. That's mm-hmm. really cool. The more you know. Mm-hmm. All right, Jamie, regale us with tales of your number one, the one that you really want to see in Epcot. All right, so my number one is Alaska. That would be really cool. Mm-hmm. I think if, I could... if they could pull off being so immersive that you actually, like, have snow coming on you when you walk into the land and, like, the, the polar ice cap polar ice caps and you're walking in and snow comes on you and then Olaf comes. <laughs> he visits from Norway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like snow is all connected. <laughs> exactly. And then also I'd like to go uh, an honorable mention. It's not an animated Disney movie, but it is a Disney movie called Snow Dogs. It had Cuba Gooding in it. It did have Cuba Gooding <laughs> Jr. in it. Oh, that's made my day. <laughs> That is great. I oh my love goodness. that movie. Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> bites the ear of a husky in that movie. <laughs> After he falls uh, like 15 they feet They make into a animatronic, a <laughs> animatronic of him. Oh my goodness. That would be great. I want that to be a ride. Where oh we all, my gosh. We all ride in a little thing and then the dogs are, where the huskies are pulling us. That is just great. <laughs> you know what though? Like- you're laughing at it, but that's actually not a terrible idea. I know. Like, <laughs> Alaska as a country, because you are going to get some food you'd never think of. You well, know what Alaska I'm saying? is a state, yeah, first of all, Bryce. Well, yeah, I <laughs> know that. darn it. It's okay. It's okay. We can do states. I mean, shoot, why not? <laughs> Again, though, Alaska is very much like Hawaii, where it is so different from the mainland America. Yeah. Exactly. Eh, why not? Yeah. I, I mean, if you were to tell me to, if, if I wanted to say if it was a state, of course, legally it's a state. But right. I mean, shoot, I can I can change my head a little with this on the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can be like, okay. Be like, this girl Alaska no de- declared independence. <laughs> they won a bloody civil war, <laughs> which many ice giants died <sighs> and they gave their life. I like it, man. I like. I think it's a great idea. There you go. All right. I feel like we should preface this episode with you're allowed to pick states or countries. <laughs> there you Just go. Just so I don't sound like a complete idiot. <laughs> That's all right. I feel like a lot of people would get Hawaii and Alaska mixed up. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And don't yeah. even get me started with Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, though, I think it would be a lot of fun to have an Alaska area because you would be able to get stuff there, like, as far as food goes, like, whale. Like, you're not getting that in the American prop, the America proper that we have now, that we have now. So, that would be a lot of, cool. that would be a lot of fun to me. I, I think that would be really cool. That. <laughs> it's not legal here. <clears throat> well, well, see, then there you go. There's a problem. <laughs> uh, then maybe I suppose they wouldn't serve that here, would yeah, they? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're right, though. It would be very unique food, along with a lot of fish, I do know that, yeah. No, yeah, you get fish, and I'm more fixated on the snow and <laughs> the way that it's going to look. Well, if I were to go ahead and save you, why don't we just change it to Antarctica instead of Alaska? <laughs> they there both start with an A. They still declare independence. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And you know what? I mean, You get I... the Alaska and the Antarctica mixed up all the time, you know? <laughs> all the time. All, all the time. time. <laughs> to be fair, I had one before this. I just had to change it. So, <laughs> hey, you can do a happy feet thing. Uh, oh there my you go. gosh! Can I just do my whole thing over now? Do no, I, I mean we. I feel like we're coming up with this on the fo- spot, and this is magical. Okay, it is. It's, this is what happens when three people brainstorm at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. it's awesome. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
Chris, what's your country, man? All right, my final one is a place that I've always wanted to go to, and out of all these ones, probably never, ever will, and that's Egypt. Um, I loved Egypt since I was a little kid. I love the idea of it's such an ancient land, and the architecture is just stunning. I mean, it would stand out. You would know the Egyptian pavilion, and you have your pick of the litter, what you would like to put. As far as the Sphinx, the 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 Great Pyramids of Giza, the Ramesses statues, uh, you got so many things to do with, deal with. And I'm sorry, I think if you gave this to Rody, Rody would just lose his mind. Oh no <laughs> doubt, and just have a blast, uh, really immersing you in this world. Plus, you know, we were talking about uh, just different cultures, and I feel like Africa and the Middle East can kind of be represented in a nice little meet here because Egypt is is kind of like a little Middle Eastern, but yet it's in Africa, the African continent. So, I mean, you get a nice little blend. And I can only imagine what the delicacies and the sorts of food you can get there. And, you know, I know we were talking about like, hey, if we can come up with stuff. I mean, shoot, it's, it's already written there, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Have a nice little ride, something like that, that, that you can kind of really immerse yourself in there and, and get an, in, a proper Indiana Jones ride based something off of Raiders of the Lost Ark, which took place in Egypt, you know? So oh, yeah. I feel like you can do some really interesting stuff with Egypt. And like I said, as far as, you know, how we were saying we can look and we can see the Eiffel Tower, we can see uh, Italy, we can see China, we can see Japan. It'd be really cool to see just this massive, you know, pyramid or a sphinx, you know what I'm saying? Just really, and, it, and it'll stick out, you know? Yeah, it just that panning shot would be, incredible yeah like i would really like to see like a model of the great pyramid of giza oh, now yeah. i know it's very similar to the aztec pyramid that we have over in mexico but oh no they're not it, similar buddy well <laughs> just in the fact that they're both pyramids okay but <laughs> you're gonna upset a lot of people seen one place. pyramid we got pyramid? fans in egypt pyramid. that are screaming yeah. at you <laughs> you seen one pyramid pyramid you seen them all not only that but Hear me out on this. The Great Pyramids of Giza would be really interesting to have because of their connection to aliens. Oh, my God. Listen, of course. Listen. Of course. And that's all, folks. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, fi- I find it interesting. I, just the possibility. You just got to entertain the possibility, man. I think you're high. Open your heart. It's too late. This is too much of a nocturnal night for you. <laughs> o- open your heart to the little gray men. <laughs> oh my god! And they are gray. They're not green. Jeez. Get it right. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my last country. Uh, I will honestly say I st- ended up stealing it from you. We both had the mm-hmm. idea, but glad you admit it. I really did do a lot of research for this one. No, but she just only been there. But I, I mean, mean it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I guess. I guess looking on the computer is the same thing. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, well, maybe you guys can tag team this. Yeah, there you go. Would you like my help? Sure. Okay. Here's the thing about Iceland. When you first start looking at it, you're like, "Oh, it's Norway," but it's not because, yes, they do both share Vikings, and they both are essentially Scandinavian countries, but Iceland is just, is so interesting. It is a beautiful country. Now, Mm -hmm. granted, like you said, you were there and I have only seen photos on the internet. Mm -hmm. I was still blown away. It's gorgeous. Not only are like just the plains beautiful, not only do they have like these breathtaking hot springs, it's home to the Aurora Borealis. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. If ever there was a nighttime spectacular to view, it'd be the Northern Lights, right? Absolutely. I saw them in person. They're great. And I envy you a lot because I would love to see that. Just be able to look at everything that Iceland could offer. So would it be a dome? I mean, a dome wouldn't be that bad. I mean, I know we're talking about scenic. Right. But like... Maybe a big rock formation in the shape of a dome. That way, when you walk in, you got screens up and you can kind of do a Northern Lights thing and keep it cool. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to feed you, baby bird. Don't worry about <laughs> it. All right. <laughs> Make me uncomfortable. 
Well, here's the thing. I got this whole place laid out. All right, so we're talking about like a centerpiece to your land, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Iceland is famous for the Hagrimskakurga. <laughs> now, I messed up that pronunciation, and I'm sorry, but this thing is awesome looking, okay? it's a Essentially, it's a church. It stands 244 feet tall, so you'd end up having to cut it down a little bit because Disney keeps everything under 200 feet for planes, right? And the way this thing looks, it's like a stair step. It's a stair step out and a stair step up. It almost looks like a rocket blasting off. Mm -hmm. Like It's one of the best ways I can think to describe it. It was modeled off the Black Falls, which is a basalt rock formation. If I'm seeing this as like my my main draw to my land, it is standing out. There is nothing in this park that looks like this particular church. It is so cool looking. Mm -hmm. I feel like it might be a little weird that it is a church. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, other than that... <laughs> Other than might that, be a good point. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously you wouldn't. Well, this is your dreamland, and I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, but obviously you wouldn't be holding, you know, mass there or anything like that. <laughs> Just <laughs> a massive cross <laughs> in the park. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I say nay nay. <laughs> can we just go whaling instead? Like, can we just do something like that? Well, it's funny that you bring that up because Iceland is renowned for whaling, right? And so that is part of what I would want the video to be. Now, I know that I said that this church is a church, but the way I'm thinking about using it is as like the dropout to the video, right? Because this place is so beautiful Disney loves to put together these videos of like culture and the countryside. Come like in Canada. In, yeah, exactly. And then in France, they have it as well. Mm -hmm. So I want a video kind of like that. Now, in Iceland, there's this place called the Skaftafell Ice Caves. Now, how cool would it be if on your way into this video, you walk in through this cave and it's an ice cave. And then as you go into the theater, it carries over that same motif. So the theater is an ice cave, and then it lets you out into the back of this really cool building. Hmm. I have an idea. What's that? You get only a certain amount of coats, kind of like at the ice bar that they have. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then you throw those coats on. You get a certain amount because, you know, we'll have like 50 coats, let's say. Right. That way you can walk in and kind of get that really cave feel. That, that would, would be, be really sweet. cool. Turn it really low, have you watch the video, and then hang them back up and then have Yeah, it. full immersion. Exactly. <clears throat> that would be really cool. The other thing that really sold me on Iceland as being part of this area is one of the other things that you could do with it. Literally, these are in no other pavilion in World Showcase. Iceland is renowned for its geysers. Mm -hmm. You could have an old faithful style geyser going off every 30, 40 minutes, just boom, and then it just showers down on people. How cool would that be? Yeah. It's interesting. Like, it's I, feel like I feel like that would be a really big draw. Exactly like what you said. It's different. It's mm -hmm. something interesting. Sure. I think this would be a really great land. Tell me about your food. It's not much, man. <laughs> I mean, you got... <laughs> God. Did research on the church, but not on the food. <laughs> well... I mean, I did do research on the food, but I, there's I not get a it. whole it's gonna lot be... there. I mean, you have meatballs well, and you have like salmon, right? Meatballs mm -hmm. and salmon. That's really yeah, what it is. Fish is going to be your big thing there. Exactly. However, if you'd like to ask me, since I've been there. Why don't you go ahead and put some input in? Well, thank you so much for asking. Um, one of the things I enjoyed the most when I was in Iceland, actually, was their fries, which sounds kind of funny. They have these fries that come in a cone. Okay. And you can put different sauce on them. Like I did ranch. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was a fry cone with ranch all over it. Really? I mean, you can do that at home, but <laughs> for whatever <laughs> re for whatever reason, that was fantastic. Okay. All right, then. Icelandic fried fries. Fried awesome. <laughs> all right. The last thing I want to ask you guys is which pavilion would you take out? Because... Right now, there's 11 countries in World Showcase, and you're like, you know what? This one just doesn't work. Jamie, which one do you got? 
Um, I had the American Adventure or the USA. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I hate that pavilion a lot. It's I, worthless. <laughs> it's really not the best. For as immersive and as interesting and as cultural as the other pavilions are, mm -hmm. this one just doesn't have that. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't feel that. Exactly. Not in my opinion, anyway. Yep. What about you? I find it boring. I don't ever go to it. Yeah. It's because you guys live in America. <laughs> I don't want to visit I, it. I honestly, this was the, the last time we went to, to Disney was the only, first and only time we've ever been inside of it. Right. I liked it. Like, I really did. did. Yeah. I just kind of like the artwork that they had up there. Like, um, I, I agree in the fact that it definitely could do a lot better for sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like they really need it do something with that Indian Native American section. Mm. It should definitely be bigger. It should definitely really do something with it. You know, it should mm. pop more. Yeah. I mean, we're a land filled with multiple cultures. You know, mm. you can get different styles of food. I mean, don't be afraid. I know our history is spotted, but <laughs> so is many of these other countries. So, right. And you know, we can. There's a way to still do things respectfully and highlight the many cultures that are in America, not just Native Americans, but you know, Americans yeah. that came over from Europe, and still have a way where we can, you know, you can highlight not just very small amounts, but show different food. I mean, shoot, who wouldn't want to try Native American food? Mm -hmm. You know, like the the Plains Indians. You know, and that's what kills me right now is mm. the food in the American Pavilion. It's essentially a cafeteria. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It is burgers and fries. Well, I, it is chicken I've heard, tenders. I've never tried it, but I heard their uh, their barbecue when they have like their ribs and brisket is really good. And, you really? know, to be fair, that's, you know, we love barbecue in here in America. But, you know, exactly. I think we, we forget that all these other cultures around the America. world smoke meat and eat it just like we do, too. So it's not really like something like we can be like we own barbecue, you know. Right. Exactly. And I feel like that's the problem with the American Pavilion because America is such a huge melting pot. You can't have anything that's its own, really. You know I feel what I'm like saying? they're trying to go for that colonial feel. And if you are, then embrace it. Go with that New England, New York, right. these mm -hmm. big cities and give us give us those type of taverns give us a bar like if make me feel like i'm in a in a 1700s 1800s yes, exactly. bar in new england or new york and and give us that just give us that feel you know and and serve us uh you know chicken pot pie or something that is akin to how it was back then you know mm -hmm. not just hand me a turkey leg that i can get from anywhere else but then give me the best turkey leg that you have ever made you know dude i'm 100 percent with you because here's the thing during Food and Wine Festival, America has this lobster roll, and it is outstanding. It is incredible. You have Maine lobsters, right? So if you're going with that colonial feel, that would fit right in. I don't know why that's not there all year round. Like, it really could be, and it should be in my opinion. I do have a lot of problems with the American Pavilion, and I walk right past it like you're talking about oh i run through the entrance of epcot i can't get through america fast enough mm -hmm. <laughs> the only mm -hmm. time i might stop there is because that's where the eat to the beat concert stage is and if it's a mildly interesting group or artist or something i'll stop by and watch it real quick yeah. but then i'm moving right along mm -hmm. yep same here what about you chris man what are uh what pavilion do you want out of there well, honestly, it comes. It came down to two, and I'm just going to explain my reasoning. I would get rid of Germany just because I feel like Germany is so steeped in our culture anyway. That's you know, fair. it's just one to me that is just, there's so many European countries. That's one, like if, I, if they told me to take away a European country, it would be Germany. Not, not out of saying that their culture is not important or like I know it all. But no, I mean, we have... We're, we're very familiar with the German culture. You know, we have a lot of Oktoberfest down here. There's lots right. of Germans that come down here. We mm -hmm. know personally a lots of Germans that tell us about their culture. And, and you know, we know what it is. Sure. Um, but 
if I do have to remove a land, but th- that's but the cool thing about Germany is it's quality. It it does does Germany really well. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, if I had to pick out, just pull out one country that I feel like is just, I don't feel like there should be there. It's Germany, but one that definitely needs to go is the African one. For it's sure, it's pretty rough, isn't it? It's brutal, be, partly because that, um, you know, with America, you get a grasp of America at the very least. You know what you're looking at. You That's walk fair. in, you know what America is. Mm-hmm. Um, say what you want. I mean, it may not represent America the best way, but there's when when I walk into the American gift shop, they have unique, uniquely colonial and cool little like Amer- throwbacks to American history that you can purchase or buy. Right. You know, and, and like I said, the say what you will, the buildings are at the very least still impressive. Um, the African pavilion is just it's it's ridiculous partly because i feel like they there's so much culture there in africa that i feel like you can expound upon i feel like me and you touched on it when we talk about how the animal kingdom lodge is a home run when it comes to showing the african culture not maybe to the 100 percent the best extent but it gives you a feel like you're in africa you're very immersed Mm -hmm. but over here in the world showcase it's legit. It's like a footnote. I don't even know why it's there. There's no, to me, there's no uh, restaurants or anything there that says, hey, this is an African themed area. Let's make you feel like you're in Africa. Aside from the area where they have kids playing drums, like there's no cool, unique gift shop even in there that's like, because Africa has so many beautiful things that they make themselves. So, I mean, you can do a lot with Africa, and I feel like they just underperform in that area. Especially when you're leaving China and there's just this beautiful place. Right. Or you're leaving, is it Norway? That's after it, either Norway or Germany. It's Germany. Germany. And Germany's impressive when you're passing it. You're like, this this is very well, very well done. It is. When you're coming from either of those sides and then you see Africa, you're like, what's with all these they're not even huts. They're just <laughs> <laughs> some of them just literally have umbrellas on them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's really weird. Yeah, you're right. That's fair. I, the the term footnote or afterthought is really what comes to mind. I feel like they're like, ah, we need to get another country in here. What else can we do? Uh, let's do Africa. And like I was saying, I do give them credit for bringing in the uh, the Thatchers and br- like just actually thatching a roof. I think that's incredible. But it's kind of equivalent to putting lipstick on a pig. It's still not the best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, I mean, you have all these other countries around the world that show their architecture similar to right. the African pavilion, but yeah. you feel like you're in those countries. You feel like you're immersed. Like with Africa, you don't. You just feel like this is just a weird. The main draw of Africa is a place to get a Coke. Yeah. Literally, it's a counter service. And that's the thing. Service. You can get oh, wow. a Coke anywhere else. Like you, Then that's the thing. You don't feel like you're in Africa. You, even the food area that they have there, there's nothing uniquely African there. You know, you would think mm. like, hey, let's put stuff in here. that Because with the all culture. the other pavilions, they have that. You you're know? right. And that's weird because you have, and I, I hate to keep going back to it, man, but the Food and Wine Festival, Africa is mm. awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have the buttered chicken, and then they have the, what was it, the tandoori, the tandoori beef tips. Oh, my good Lord. Amazing. They're awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Why is that, again, not there year round? Yeah. Uh, you've made a very good point for Africa. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even think about that, but that's true. Like, I mean, I know America is not that great. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to, like, if you still, like, had to compare the two, you can at least walk into a building and be immersed in the culture and still get a little bit of a history lesson. There's like a little tour thingy in there. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's something. Like with Africa, you're giving me nothing from your culture. At all. Nothing. True. I hear you, man. Hurry back. Hurry back. We're dying to have you.